Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel. In my previous vlog, I showed that I purchased some clear book refills and some post screws because I had to expand my existing clear book so that it can carry more of the government documents that I need to work with and work on for now. This is the existing clear book, the one that's bound with a coil of some sort. It is also Seagull branded, just like the refills that I purchased. This is just the best quality that I have access to locally. And this clear book that I already have already carries some of those documents, but it has gotten a little dusty after several months. This particular clear book, because it's bound like this, doesn't carry much content. I think there are only about 20 sleeves in this, which is why I bought more of the refills. I also have here my super old clear book, which I have had for almost three decades. And it has also gotten dusty over time, but let me just show you that it is bound a different way. The pockets or the sleeves are fused to the spine and that makes it pretty much fixed. I cannot add or subtract sleeves from these. And if I do have to change up the order of the papers that are in here, I have to take out the papers and then put them back in, in the new order that I want. That can be a little cumbersome. Considering that these papers need to be taken care of, which means the less handling that they go through, the better. So I opted to move to the refillable loose leaf clear book. But most of the loose leaf clear books are pretty thin, like I showed you earlier, which is why I'm going to use these post screws to make them thicker. These post screws are very inexpensive, so I bought three different sizes because I wasn't sure which one I actually need. I have them in 0.75 inch, 1 inch, and 1.5 inches. I do suspect, however, that I will be ending up with a thick stack, so I went ahead and used the 1.5 inch post screws. These are basically just posts with a screw closure, like so, and we place them along the holes. It doesn't have to be in every single hole, we just need to place enough post screws to make the entire stack stable. And there are 27 holes in here. It says so in the packaging and I also counted to make sure. <laughs> These pockets are for the Philippine legal sized papers, which is eight and a half inches by 13 inches, which I believe is also called the US folio size, but I'm not sure. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I decided that the placement of the posts would be at every fifth hole from the bottom for three posts and every fifth from the top for the other uh, three posts. I think that would provide a stable enough binding. And after taking out all of the refills from their packaging, it is now time to dismantle the binding of my actual clear book. This plastic attachment has a lock right here. We just need to take out the first three loops out of the spine in this end because there is no lock on the other end. And then from that, we can easily slide out the spine and then take everything out. The spine can be reused, of course, and I plan to do that, so I'm putting this aside. Now this purplish or plum colored cover is not really my style, but when I bought this clear book, this was the best option that I had. I would have wanted just a plain black cover, just like what's on the back of the covers, as you can see, and I can flip it so that the black will be facing out, but I don't know yet how I feel about that, so for now I will use the original cover orientation. And after the posts are placed on the holes where they should be, it is just a matter of putting in the sleeves. Each pack of refills has 10 sleeves, and I bought 4 packs, so I'll have 40 new sleeves in addition to the 20 sleeves that I already have from my old clear book, so that's 60 sleeves in total. One advantage of having a loose leaf clear book is, like I said earlier, 
We can shuffle around the papers without having to take them out of the sleeves so that the documents are protected from possible stains like ink stains or even just the normal oils and moisture from hands and maybe also from food stains. <laughs> and if we need to have the papers photocopied or scanned, we don't need to take them out of the pockets. They will scan or photocopy just as clearly. So we just need to take out that specific sleeve, give it to the person for scanning or photocopying, and then place it back. There is no need to take the paper out of the sleeves. And there is also no need to bring out the entire book, which is what might happen if you have the fixed, non-refillable clear book like my old one. It is just safer for documents that way. I don't even take out my clear book outside of my bedroom and I have no plans to. So a refillable clear book is just way easier for me. And if you are a Filipino who have dealt with the government for any reason, or if you are a foreign national who has had to deal with the Philippine government for any reason, you will know why a clear book is essential. We are not yet fully electronic in this day and age. And most government documents are only valid and acceptable if they are in their original hard copy, which is characterized by either special paper or a dry seal or a foiled sticker, or in the version that we call certified true copy. Okay, now all of the 40 new sleeves are in, and as you can see, there's still enough space on the posts for more sleeves. The seagull sleeves have reinforced holes, which is why they are white along that side because there's uh, something sandwiched in between the clear sheets. So the sleeve part is thinner than the holes part, but the sleeves will become thicker as I put in more papers. So just to give you an idea of some of the government forms that I need to save keep, here is my certificate of registration with the National Book Development Board. I am registered as an author and writer, a publishing specialist, and an editor. Registration for this is done online, and I will link it in the description box, but the actual registration document is in hard copy, which is what I have. Another government document that I have here is my copyright registration for the backpack that I designed, the leather backpack. I have a video about it on my channel, and I will link it down below. I have a ton of others here that I have to organize, and I will do that off camera because these are mostly supposed to be kept confidential. All right, at this point, I have managed to organize about half of my papers, and I realized that I needed even more clear book pockets. So I have closed the posts with their respective screw closures for now. And I just wanted to show you the back of the posts are plain and the screw tops have a line across and that's so you can see which is the closure and also just in case you need a screwdriver to manage the screw there is a slot for you to put a screwdriver in and usually I place the posts so that the screw tops are on the front of the book but the entire post assembly can be oriented either way the screws don't have to be at the front of the book whichever is easier for you i still have this stack to organize and i'm lacking the pockets so i'm going out to buy more of the clear book refills and while i am at the store i just wanted to take the opportunity to show you why i cannot use the standard binders which would have made things one step easier for me when it comes to changing up the order of the papers as i go along here is a standard three ring binder and as you can see the holes of the refills do not line up. If I line up the hole with the bottom ring, the middle ring won't line up but the top ring will line up. If I line up one hole with the middle ring, neither the top nor the bottom ring will align with the holes. And here is a standard two hole binder and it's the same problem. The holes do not align. There are pockets with specific holes that are shaped to fit both the 27 hole plastic rings and the standard three hole and two hole binders, but I cannot find them right now and I believe they are hard to find. But I actually have them, some of them, and I will show you later on how those look like. Okay, now I am back home 
and as you can see my super old clear book with a fixed binding is already empty and the plastic pockets have already turned yellow because of age however they still work this can still be used there is no tearing that happened in this clear book except here on the cover of the spine one good thing about a fixed and covered spine is that we can put labels on them like in this case this pocket on the spine allows us to slip in a piece of paper inside it to act as a label now let me show you that refill that can fit the standard hole binders this is for the 27 hole binding but some of the holes are oval instead of circular and that allows us to use this particular refill with the standard three hole and two hole binders the refills that I just got had holes that were all circular. These refills with the oval holes came with my existing clear book when I bought it months ago, and they are available only with the clear books, I believe, not as refills. If they are available as refills, please let me know so I can get them. And I didn't really want to have to buy a bunch of entire clear books with the covers and the coils just to use the refills with the oval holes because that would make everything more expensive than it should be. So I'm fine with using the post screws because I don't even have to shuffle the papers every day. I only need to reorganize once every year or so when the documents are updated. And then after I am completely done organizing all of my government documents, I ended up occupying the entire length of the 1.5 inch post screws as you can see this is the spine part here is the view from the top here is a view from the fore edge and here is the view of the bottom this entire task took me a total of well i don't know but it was several hours but everything is here now in this one single volume so it's all time well spent. I even managed to make a table of contents page for everything that's in here, although instead of page numbers, I used letters because that's what our government does. When submitting anything to the government, the attachments should be marked Annex A, Annex B, and so on. And when submitting a presentation or an appeal in a single folder, the sections should also be tabbed as A, B, and C, and so on. So. I just followed suit and each section has its own divider as well of course that occupies one whole sleeve like this one for my basic documents which I'm assuming every other human being has they are all in one section that is marked by this divider and then here is my divider for the section on my schooling with the University of the Philippines now each divider is in its own dedicated sleeve and I know that's kind of a lot of sleeves considering that I have 16 sections plus the table of contents. So that's 17 sleeves in all that are not being used for the actual government documents. But I think they are essential to make this entire chunky volume easier to navigate. And I plan to put in tabs that are marked A, B, and C and so on and attach them to each of the divider. But I haven't yet figured it out. I'm not sure whether to do it. I just might make laminated dividers instead with the tabs, but I'm not even sure yet. Maybe, maybe I'll put post-its temporarily for now instead of the tabs. But when it comes to the full reorganization of all of my government documents in one single chunky clear book, I am all done. And if you are like me, who prefers single volumes of everything, but also need the flexibility to change up the contents, then this is what you can do. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, let me know by leaving a link and a comment. Thanks for watching. Bye.